what was a silver lining is that we actually really did become a community of learners. Parents had to learn. Our faculty had to learn. Our students had to learn. And that's a really strong thing. Colleagues, great to have you with us. Would you mind just uh, very briefly telling us about your roles at CIS? Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Chris Caves. I'm the Director of Academic Affairs in Secondary. Currently teaching a Year 11 Research Skills class, and I've taught history um, at CIS for many years, too. Uh, I've been at CIS for four years now. I teach humanities. And this year, I started as the uh, Head of Service and Community Interaction at our Hangzhou campus. My role here is head of the uh, physical and health education department in secondary school and I'm also a year eight advisor. Uh, my name is Francis Murphy. I'm the middle years program coordinator. I teach year seven and eight mathematics and this year I'm a year seven advisor. I am Jesse Bullock and I am a teacher in the individuals and societies department and I teach year 12 and year 13 DP psychology. I'm Christine Dolman and I'm head of secondary with this shift to online learning that's happened over the last couple of months. What were the sorts of immediate challenges that you faced? And, and I guess as time went on, presumably things got a lot better, but what challenges still remain in your mind? We felt quite strong in the program that we had going straight into classes with our schedule, that our academic uh, learning was continuing well, but what we really needed to work on is how could we ensure the social and emotional well-being of our students? I teach middle school and they're just such social beings. So they really do crave engagement and they really do crave being part of the learning. And I found pretty quickly that once I gave them some agency um, and they made some choices about the learning, it was actually become quite enjoyable to, to be back online and teaching again. I found one of the most important aspects of being a teacher is being adaptable. What's happening in the school and what's happening with the year 13s and 12s and their exam schedules, that was something where every day it was a little bit different. And so just being able to continuously adapt to the situation was important. You know, for physical education and physically, physical and health education educators, uh, having lost the ability to teach face-to-face -face, uh, in a physical environment, it removes a huge pillar of, of our subject. And so we had to really, um, you know, put on our creative, um, creative hats and our innovative hats and um, and take some chances. One of the biggest challenges though is trying to maintain our sense of community. My philosophy, my teaching philosophy philosophy begins with you have to know your students uh, in order to be the most effective teacher and it's easy to feel a physical and emotional disconnect when you're behind a screen so overcoming that is certainly challenging. To be honest I wasn't, I wasn't sure if the students were learning whether the task was suitable for them. So I, I'd stopped and spent two lessons and just gave the students a questionnaire and got their feedback. They wanted, they wanted choices, they, want, they wanted games, they wanted interactive activities, they wanted some repetition. But the main thing is they wanted to work at their own pace. And the school has been talking a lot about student agency this year, but that was the key thing I got out of this, that this online really supports student agency. I spent a lot, I don't think Chris and Christine, would, we just happened to be doing that online course from Goa at the time, which just came at the right opportunity. And that gave me some insights on to how students react to online learning and what they actually need to learn. So I then went back and I actually created some essential agreements of how we will behave in a Zoom classroom. So we come up with three or four rules or essential agreements on how we're going to talk to each other and support each other that change from getting ready for an exam to what do we do was uh, an adaptation that I needed to make. And that's when I went to project-based learning, PBL. Um, I know Nick Osborne last summer with the help of the annual fund, he went to a workshop on project-based learning. And so I called him right away. Um, I had this idea for the year 13s that they could um, do projects. Again, it's that agency, they would choose the project. Um, it would be related to COVID and what's happening and applying psychology. So this project that I created, I had about 20 hours to create something for them to do that was meaningful, that they would be engaged in and they would have a sense of accomplishment. I had them work in groups because again, that those personal relationships just making sure that they're working with people, even though it's virtually, they're working together. One group, they created an entire 
Minecraft world to teach year eights about COVID and where it came from and how to protect themselves. These students, they told me they probably spent 100 hours building this world. Um, they created informational guides. There's a website about fake news that's really well done. And I've actually forwarded to some of my psychologist friends who are working with patients that are a bit confused about how to identify fake news and conspiracy theories. And they created this for the public. It was challenging for us to come up with ways where, you know, how do you interact and move together in an online environment that's not teacher directed? We wanted to have students lead and students interact and students um, share and learn from each other. The school came through with just completely amazing timing and a very well thought out resource, which is Swerkit. And the Swerkit Premium uh, application was offered to all, all members of the community. It allowed students to not only to just design and implement their own workouts, which is, which is great, but it allowed them to interact together in breakout rooms. Once students could take ownership of that and they could work collaboratively to do that. We had students in a group of three or four, um, one leading the screen, the others talking about the exercises that they felt were important, the ones that they liked, building workouts together and sharing them with the class. Uh, currently, we are doing a unit called History Has My Eyes. Uh, it's about COVID. Because we're online, we can let kids choose their groups. It's allowed us to be more flexible with how we arrange our teaching staff. So for example, uh, a student from class A is able to join up in a group with students from class B and C whose skills are able to complement them. And they're able to pop into one teacher's Zoom room to get some advice on how to go about seeking a volunteer opportunity for 10 minutes or so. And then they're able to have their own little virtual chat. I'm not sure this would be as efficient in in-person room. So I think this whole semester has caused us to think about whether we can implement elements of virtual teaching, even when we get back into a physical space. Somebody once said that it is important not to let a good crisis go to waste. And there's no doubt about it that over the course of the last four months, you and other members of our educational team have really seized every opportunity to do something quite extraordinary on behalf of our students, which is find a path forward, actually, which may be even more enriching than the path on which we were previously. Teachers learnt with students. And so the exponential growth in some of the professional development has been huge. And what has happened is that faculty now, they talk about this increase in their knowledge of the strategies that they can use in an online environment and how now if we move into a blended approach how do we take the best of both worlds i also think it's causing us to re-examine some of the more conventional ideas about teaching in in one of our classes um, in one of our subjects we, we were faced with how do we give a test to students when they're on the other side of the screen online how do we ensure that they don't have another screen next to them and that it's equitable for all students and instead of asking them a question on a quiz that they could easily search up why don't we be more creative about what type of assessments we're asking them to do learning will happen if there's a strong relationship and, and bonds between students and teachers and you know colleagues uh, the par parental community and I just feel, you know, that's where we're extremely fortunate that um, we have, I think, really strong relationships between all of those groups, some of the technology. It's actually, in some ways, it was more effective. You know, the breakout rooms, the one-to-one -one conversations. I probably had more one-to-one -one conversations over the last few months than I've ever had. I'm wondering um, what you see as the learnings from this period of 15 weeks that you would absolutely want us more than anything else, to keep alive in whatever future kind of educational model we build together at CIS. Certainly this has shown us that we are moving towards more personalized learning. So it's up to us how we can create an environment, again, whether that's physical or digital, where uh, they are challenged and they're engaged in something that they feel really passionate about. Hangzhou has invested very heavily in uh, social emotional needs of our students. We've had several teachers go through certificates from the University of Melbourne in positive education. I, I've, I've completed mine and we've shown that, that, that we know that it's not just about the information, but it's about the whole student. 
how synchronous learning and asynchronous learning can work together. That was my biggest takeout. And I found a lot of my students give me the resources and the time and the knowledge and the opportunity and we can work in our own time or in a group and we'll get it done. I think that also that same safety and security of the one-on-ones. And I think in the breakout rooms, meeting with students one-on-one, they spoke more freely than they would have at school. And hopefully we can continue if it means, you know, doing some online interviews. We'll see, but it's, it's a nice benefit of the blended approach. And I have to say my year 12s and 13s really enjoyed sleeping in. So I don't know if that's something we can support later, but I know they appreciate it. With regards to student parent teacher conferences, uh, you know, obviously that had to go online. And for the majority of people, it, it seems to have been a positive experience. We know that uh, for every SPTC we have, it's not always possible for parents to attend. And yet with the, the online version, um, we did have parents attend SPTCs, we know for the very first time. The other thing that we saw quite clearly is, and it's been alluded to in these conversations, is the dependency on feedback and us seeking feedback. That's something that I think we must continue. We all have listened to what students had to say about their own learning, and so therefore we made changes which enhanced it to meet their needs. And so I'd hate for that to go away because their voice was so strong within that part. When we take into consideration the arc of innovation which you and other members of our educational teams have been able to develop on behalf of our students over the course of the last 15 or 16 weeks, we can be and must be not only deeply proud and honored to be associated with you and to know that you are the ones bringing alive the mission of the school day in and day out, but we can also be deeply confident in the future of teaching and learning at CIS, knowing that what we have experienced over the course of this period of campus closure and online learning has only made us stronger. Thank you very, very much for the wisdom and understanding which you have shared with us this afternoon. All the very best to you and to everyone in our community for the week which lies ahead.